Okay, welcome back to the Empire of Dirt. Um, we've got a little, fairly good sized project um, that we're going to be working on over the next couple, couple of weeks probably because I don't have time to do it all very fast. Um, this is my full sized English wheel. And, um, you know, if you've got a part like this, and here I've got, I put a couple of big uh, hammer blows into it. This, this wheel has no problem smoothing those guys out it you know it's got plenty of rigidity and stiffness you just run you just run it through you know and you just keep increasing the pressure as you as you flatten down that that lump and before long you know you've, you've gotten rid of that that walnut what they're called the problem with 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 wheels that, that are this size is as you can see if if you're trying to get into a corner if you've got a, a, a formed edge on here or something the actual pressure point is the middle of the wheels so you can only get a two inch wheel you can only get within an inch of an edge if you're trying to uh, if you're trying to work up in into a corner So, so to try and get around that, you know, I, I built some custom wheels that allow you to get in a lot closer. So now you know you can you can get in a little bit closer to that edge. The problem with these wheels is that they are have a fairly high radius to them, and if you're not careful, they do leave tracking marks uh, with that high radius, that high crown radius. So I was wanting to get some other wheels um, that were narrower that would allow me to to track uh, closer into these these edges. So a few weeks ago, this came on sale at uh, our local, what we call Princess Auto, and that's the equivalent of uh, the U.S. of Harbor Freight. So it, you know, it, it came on sale for like a hundred and twenty dollars Canadian or something like that. So for that, you know, I couldn't really pass it up. I thought I would get my. I wasn't really expecting much out of it uh, in terms of actually using it. Because uh, I just I just know that that the frame is too light to actually be of any real use. But I thought I could use the wheels. You know what? For 120 bucks, I couldn't buy the material and, and bearings and on shafts and all the shit to to actually make the wheels. So I figure for 120 bucks, I'll buy it and I'll use the wheels. So when I actually tried it, it, it did exactly what I expected it would do. Um, you, there's just so much flex in the frame. That it just rolls over the bumps. It doesn't do anything to flatten the bumps. This is 080 um, half hard aluminum, and it's virtually useless. You can't do anything with it. Maybe you could. It might flatten out some some 045 or something that's been maybe some maybe even 1 16th if it was annealed. But but for this type of stuff, it just doesn't do anything. And you can just see the flex. You can those those wheels are actually touching each other I can set them so they're actually touching each other and you just jam the piece in and the frame just flexes so it's not doing anything so that was that's the project uh, you know I was thinking of building adapters to adapt this wheel to my big machine but it's a pain in the ass changing the wheels out all the time and I thought you know what if I can if I can stiffen this frame up maybe I can use make something that's actually useful um, I, I would only be using this stuff for the final smoothing um, of parts, mainly anyways. I would still do, you know, 90% of the work on the big wheel and just use this one to for the, for the areas that I can't get out with the big one. So that's the project. We're going to try and stiffen this frame up and actually make, uh, try and actually make a useful little mini English wheel out of it.
here is the uh, here's the frame um, modeled and uh, we're going to run an, an FEA analysis on it and we're going to see uh, how much flex we're getting and uh, and then we can start our stiffening project from there so uh, what I did is I restrained the model back here simulating uh, you know the uh, the frame being held in a vise and I've applied loads in 500 pounds in this direction 500 pounds in, in that direction I, I arbitrarily just just picked the thousand pound load you know it, it's it's as long as I keep that same load in all my simulations it's going to give me comparative results from simulation to simulation so we, when we run the sim simulation and we show the displacement, this is how far, uh, this is what we're getting for movement. Um, and what we're seeing is up in these red zones, uh, we are seeing a quarter of an inch of movement. Uh, 2.5 to the negative 001 is, uh, yeah, is a quarter of an inch of movement. And and so that that is reflective, of, you know, sort of, of what we're seeing is, uh, you know, the load simply overpowers, and if you continue to apply load, it'll just continue to move. Um, so so that's our that's our baseline. This was my first thought of doing a real simple stiffening was just to place a bar uh, in between that uh, that got bolted together and clamped the two arms together um, and actually for a very simple uh, gusseting system uh, this really does work quite well you know we've now moved our displacement to uh, about 30 thousandths of an inch, uh, 3.2 to the negative 002. So, so you know, d did a pretty good job for really cheap, you know, and really easy. You could knock up that brace in a couple of hours and uh, and be done with it. Now, the downside to that is you are cutting into your distance that you can run parts through, which may not even be an issue, uh, you know, for a little for a little wheel like this. Um, and you're only going to be doing small parts in it, I bet you that wouldn't have even been, been a problem. My other thought was to possibly just bolt this wheel to my the back of my big wheel and use, use the mass of the big wheel uh, to stiffen this thing, and that would have worked too. Um, but I thought, let's have some fun, let's try something different, let's see what else we can we can do. So I went online and I looked at how some large English wheels are are designed and built and stiffened and they look like this. They've got upper and lower beams, gussets you know, going to a main backbone and then they've got this back gusset. So I thought, okay, well that's easy enough to do with, uh, I can just go buy a, a length of one inch tubing. Um, and because we're dealing with such small thin material, these main arms are two by one material and probably 100 thou wall thickness and the gussets, uh, you know, the easily available material that I got was 100 thou wall one by one. Um, you know, they tend to buckle in the design too. So I've thrown in some plate uh, top and bottom. And then this stiffener in here uh, stiffened things up too. Similar to the second variation of, of gusseting or the first variation of gusseting but it maintains a lot more open open area and so now we're seeing 22 thou of, of flex so we are even better than the first variation of gusseting and we've maintained this this open area so I think this is what we're going to do. We're going to cut up some tubing. We're going to gusset this. We'll find some plate. I'm going to have to locate some plate. I don't think I have any, but I'll have to find. I'll have to figure something out uh, for that. And this one, I may that main gusset going up there. I may use um, some more tube in place there because again, I, I 
I have more tubing lying around than I do flat plate. Okay, I've uh, stripped the frame, or stripped the wheel butt down, right down to the basic frame. And uh, so that's where we can, I can start with that. And uh, I'll take this outside. It's freezing cold with about a foot of snow outside, but I'll take it out and uh, grind the paint off in the areas that we're going to be doing some welding. Um, down on the floor, we got a, an eight foot length of one inch steel tubing, and that's where we'll start cutting up to uh, to make the gussets. We're good to go. Welcome back. Okay, so um, we have the, the extensions, the three extensions welded on, and uh, we need to uh, <clears throat> we need to cut these other longer pieces to to fit, to make the uh, upper, lower, and the back braces. Um, the bandsaw will cut, uh, you know, this angle. It's it's. Uh, it's not a very extreme angle. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, of about 30 degrees, and that's no problem. The bandsaw will cut up to about 45 degrees, but this one, these angles here are very extreme. You can't cut them on the bandsaw. Uh, not. You know, you can we can we'll have to set the bandsaw up in the vertical position and just cut them by hand. 
So um, we can, I'll figure out the angles, I'll mark them, I'll probably just end up cutting them all by hand because it's not, it's not that critical um, that we get a super precise angle on these. They just got to fit tight without any gaps and I think I can just do that by hand. Here's one of these things that you put up with for a million bloody years for no real reason. Um, this is a horizontal bandsaw, so it's really meant to cut in this position. But you can use it as a as a vertical bandsaw. It's not great, but you can do it. And it came with this crappy formed steel deck that you could put in place uh, to give yourself something to put your material on. And it's never straight. You're out, you're never really sure. you put any pressure on it. It bends. You're never really sure you're getting a straight cut. And I've had this bandsaw for like 20 years, and I've always been going to build a better deck for it, and and never did. So today I finally had enough. It took me about 20 minutes to build. It was just a piece of scrap aluminum that I had, drilled and countersunk some holes, put a big hole for the blade slot to go through, and 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 a slot to feed the blade in and uh, it's way better than it was. Here's where we're at so far. This is basically a day's afternoon, I guess you'd call it, uh, worth of work. Um, everything's tacked in place. I've got a couple more gussets to go in, plate gussets, but uh, I, I can't put those in until I get all the rest of it welded because some of those gussets are going to block some of, the, some of the welds. So everything's just been tacked up at this point and needs to be fully welded. It's uh, minus 20 something outside in the garage right now. Uh, my neighbor has a heated garage, so uh, I think I can go over there and use his garage and uh, get this thing welded up. But uh, won't be won't be this week, anyways. I don't have time. It'll be next weekend again. So uh, that's where it's at. All right, welcome back. Next week is today, and. Uh, Okay, I got all the I got all the bracing welded in, and uh, typical of the quality of something like this. I was doing some testing. This this fits up into here, and this is what controls the position of the wheel. And as I'm as I'm tight, tightening it up, it just pushed it pushed the nut out of the bottom of the. Uh, of the tubing. I, I, it's hard to tell. It doesn't look like there was any weld on there whatsoever. Looks looks like it was almost either pressed in. I can feel a little tit of weld. Maybe they spot welded it or something. Uh, whatever it was, it wasn't enough to hold. <laughs> it wasn't enough to hold anything anyways, that's for sure. So I need to weld that in before I do any further testing. Uh, the little bit of testing I did I didn't notice a huge improvement. Uh, it still seems pretty, pretty flimsy. So, uh, in in fairness, I was using, uh, I was testing with some 080 aluminum, and and it is, it had been uh, run through the other English wheel and everything, so it was a little work hardened. So, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna weld that back in, and we'll test it again with some uh, 060 aluminum.
which would be a little easier. And maybe I might even anneal, anneal that aluminum first and give it a fighting chance of uh, doing something with it. We'll see. This all might have been a monumental waste of time and 30 bucks worth of steel, but uh, <laughs> we'll see whether, whether it's any good or not. So we put the nut back in with uh, some proper welding. Uh, <laughs> not really like that welding that was getting a little out of control. <laughs> but uh, use the TIG welder and put that nut in. So focus. So uh, that's not going anywhere. So we'll set this thing back up and we'll give it another try and see whether all this effort has done anything or not. So I did a little test. So I did a little test, and that's it. Actually, it works surpri almost surprisingly. So uh, we'll just we'll just take we'll just bash a couple of dents in here, and we'll try and take them out. So that's kind of typical. We this thing's painted, but it doesn't matter. So we we've, we've put some walnuts in there. We call them, and uh, we'll try taking them out. So all's not perfect. It uh, it's still got a lot of slop in everything. So, but if we tighten it up a little bit and we start running those walnuts through, So there eventually, you know, it works pretty well actually for what it is. You can see there that it, it took the walnuts out. And I'd have to call that a success actually. So for probably 150 bucks Canadian, I think I paid about 120 for the for the wheel itself and uh, another 30 bucks for a length of uh, tubing um, you know it works good project that's uh, I think I'll be using that and getting uh, you know it's not something you'd want to use all the time uh, especially I guess maybe on some little thinner material it would be quite useful all the time but uh, you know for me it's just a, a tune-up device to uh, get into some tight corners and use as required not bad, whatever.